Alex Pereira has very quickly become one of the most successful combat athletes of all time. From a multi-time, multi-division world champion in kickboxing, where he holds the title of the most feared striker on earth, to becoming a multi-division world champion in MMA inside of just two years. Continue watching to learn about the career of Alex Poetan Pereira. Before I get into today's video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more resume reviews. Thus far, I've done them on Drikas Duplessis, Magomed Ankalaev, Shavkat Rahmanov, Bo Nickel, Anthony Johnson, Ilya Tapuria, Sean O'Malley, Jack Della Maddalena, TJ Dillashaw, Chris Weidman, Brock Lesnar, and now Alex Pereira. I'll link the others in the description below. Growing up in the favelas of Brazil, Pereira dropped out of middle school at age 12 to acquire a job, first working as a bricklayer's assistant before changing titles and working 10-hour shifts at a tire shop. During this time, Pereira developed a very unhealthy habit, becoming an alcoholic in his teenage years. In 2009, at the age of 21, Pereira decided to start training kickboxing in order to aid him in getting rid of his addiction, and after a lot of work, the rest is history, really. Pereira began kickboxing as an amateur soon after, climbing to 25-3 and three across 28 fights, all 25 wins coming via knockout, before eventually turning professional. During this time, he captured a silver medal at the Amateur Waco World Championships in 2013. Pereira continued to battle alcoholism into his professional career, though he was eventually able to kick the habit. Nonetheless, he would win his first 11 bolts as a professional before losing for the first time to 18-2-1 Jason Wilness. Three more wins would follow before he'd lose for a second time, this time to 34-3 Cesar Almeida, who he'd just beaten earlier that year in 2013. Once more, he'd win three more fights before losing to Artem Levin, winning his next two straight before losing his rematch to Jason Wilness making it to 5-2 over his last seven. Following a second defeat to Wilness, Pereira would defeat Cesar Almeida in their trilogy via unanimous decision. Pereira fought in MMA for the first time in the middle of his pro kickboxing run at Jungle Fight 82, debuting in October of 2015. Pereira had a record of 20-4 and four in kickboxing going into this fight, while his opponent Quimel Otani had an MMA record of 3-0, all three wins via knockout. Pereira had a good start on the feet until the fight hit the mat, and while he threatened Otani with an armbar early on, he would ultimately get all grappled through the opening five minutes. He then poured on the pressure in round two, cracking Otani with hard combinations and absolutely unloading on him, but he was unable to get him out of there and ended that round on his back. Otani would search for a final takedown in round three, eventually securing Mont, taking Pereira's back, and sinking in the rear naked choke submission at 2.52 of round three. This was a very gutsy performance by Poetan, but he was simply out experienced in this new art form. Pereira would return to the MMA cage three months later at Jungle Fight 85 to face 8-7 and seven Marcelo Cruz. As expected, Pereira looked great on the feet in this one too, though he would again get taken down in the first minute of the fight. A lack of action caused the referee to stand them back up, where Pereira immediately went to work with a striking. After going back and rewatching these earlier fights of his, it's great to see he didn't hesitate with his strikes early on in his career. Some boxers or kickboxers that try their hand at MMA can't let their attacks go because they're too afraid of getting taken down. Not Pereira, though. He fought with a wealth of confidence right out of the gate in a brand new sport, and it led to a knockout win at 4.07 of the opening round in his second MMA fight, seeing him secure his first MMA win. Pereira would have his first fight with Israel Adesanya next in his return to kickboxing, being awarded the unanimous decision victory on the scorecard before knocking out Junior Alpha improving him to 22-4 and four in kickboxing. Pereira then went into his third MMA fight with a record of 1-1, one one, where he faced 6-0 and Marcus Vinicius at Jungle Fight 87. Most of this fight was spent in the clinch along the fence, Vinicius wanting no part of the striking game against Poetan, and really who could blame him? Pereira had clearly been working on his takedown defense leading up, because Vinicius attempted about 100 of them and didn't secure a single one. After getting taken down in both his first and second MMA fights, this was a huge improvement to see out of Pereira, who would ultimately win the ball via TKO at 4.55 of round 2. After climbing to 2-1 as a mixed martial artist, Pereira switched his full-time focus back to kickboxing, where he'd return to be defeated by Arthur Koshenko via TKO at 255 of round 2. Pereira would win his next two straight, beginning with his rematch against Adesanya, where he KO'd the fellow future UFC champion with that nasty left hook of his, before doing the same to Barim Rama, only finishing Rama off with his right hook. Pereira would then lose a unanimous decision to 21-3 Usuri Balgore, and this was the last time he'd lose in over four years. Pereira's legendary kickboxing run immediately followed this defeat, where he beat the likes of Simon Marcus twice, both via unanimous decision, Yusri Balgore, knocking him out twice in each their rematch and trilogy, Jason Wilness in their trilogy with a flying knee, Donny Abina via KO, and Ertigo Bayrek via KO. Next, Pereira would return to the MMA cage, where he main event at LFA 95, opposing 4-4 four four Thomas Paul. Pereira was just on point in this fight, hurting Paul with a body kick early on, followed by a couple nasty knees that dropped him. Paul returned to his feet and searched for a takedown, which he couldn't secure, forcing him back to striking range. Pereira dropped Paul with a head kick, allowing him back to his feet rather than following him down to the mat, before going for another and landing his vicious left hook immediately following that KO'd Paul stiff at 404 of round 1. 
Pereira returned to the kickboxing ring for his final two fights on the sport after this win, where he went 1-1 one one against Artem Vakitov. He'd won the interim glory light heavyweight title in his latest kickboxing appearance, and it was time to unify those two belts against the undisputed champion. Pereira went on to become the undisputed glory light heavyweight champion, defeating Vakitov via split decision before losing it in their immediate rematch via majority decision. Two months later, in November of 2021, he would make his UFC debut at UFC 268 with a record of 3-1 opposing Andreas Michaelitis, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt with titles in three other promotions that had gone 1-1 one one in the UFC to that point with an overall record of 13-4. Pereira opened up the belt with that thudding outside leg kick of his, which has really become a trademark throughout his career. This was certainly a step up in competition for the Brazilian striker, as he was taken down early on in the first, Michaelitis partially taking his back for a time there. Eventually, Pereira got back to his feet, only to be pressed into the fence for the remainder of the opening round. However, just 18 seconds into round two and Pereira landed one of the most beautiful flying knees you'll ever see, stopping the fight in his tracks and awarding Poetan victory in his UFC debut. Pereira then fought fellow Brazilian knockout artist Bruno Silva in a sophomore effort with the promotion. Silva was 22-6 and six as a professional going in. He'd gone 17-1 over his last 18 that showcased 15 knockouts. He'd never lost a stand-up fight prior. He's a former M1 Challenge middleweight champion. He knocked out both Alexander Slomenko and Artem Frolov before coming to the UFC, and he was 3-0 in the UFC at the time with three knockouts. Pereira turned Silva into a wrestler, something no one had ever done before. Silva searched for eight takedowns across the three rounds they fought, securing two of them, but ultimately being outstruck 165-72, which saw Pereira awarded the universal 30-27 scorecards across the board. Pereira was thrown right into the top five following his second straight octagon victory, where he faced number four ranked Sean Strickland in July of 2022 at UFC 276. This would be the easiest fight of Pereira's MMA career to date, KOing Strickland at 236 of the opening round. This win, along with the fact that Pereira was 2-0 against then UFC middleweight champion Israel Adesanya, granted Poetan a title shot, where he faced Adesanya in November of 2022 in UFC 281's main event in Madison Square Garden. The two traded leg kicks in the early goings of the contest, Pereira going upstairs with one about 80 seconds in. Izzy landed a good right hand about two minutes in, landing it again in the final seconds of round one, followed up by a left hook that badly hurt Pereira. But luckily for him, he was saved by the bell. Each man landed good jabs at the start of the second, and soon after entered one another's boxing range, each of them landing good punches in close. Pereira also landed a good head kick toward the end of the round, and showed a new wrinkle in his game when he took the champion down in the final seconds. Adesanya got a takedown of his own in the third and wore Pereira down throughout it, riding his back for a time before resting in his guard, and it appeared Pereira was exhausted by this point, about to go into the first round four of his MMA career. Adesanya really started to tag Pereira up in the fourth, landing most of what he threw the Brazilian's way, who was still recovering from a tiring round three. Pereira controlled the center immediately once the fifth and final round began, landing heavy combinations on the champion, and checking a leg kick that dropped him momentarily. Pereira ended up landing his vicious left hook and hurt Adesanya with it, following up with nasty combinations that got him the TKO win at 2-0-1 of round 5. Pereira had done it again. He improved to 3-0 against Israel Adesanya, and he won the UFC middleweight championship just one year or 371 days to be exact, following his UFC debut. This had climbed Pereira to 3-0 in 2022, and as such, he was awarded Fighter of the Year by nine different media outlets. Given how dominant of a champion he was, Adesanya was granted an immediate rematch, where the two participated in Part 2 or Part 4 of their saga, whichever way you look at it, six months later at UFC 287. After a back-and-forth opening round that saw each man land a number of leg kicks, Adesanya which also landed a couple nice body kicks, Pereira began to really piece Adesanya up on the feet at the start of the second. It looked a lot like the fifth round of their first MMA fight, Pereira just walking him down and unloading on combinations. Pereira backed off as they got back to striking range, where he landed a stinging jab. Pereira continued landing that calf kick of his, backing Israel up to the fence again, where he uncorked on a beautiful combination, but got careless and was caught with an overhand right, followed by a second right hand that floored him on the spot. What can we say? Israel Adesanya as a middleweight title challenger is one dangerous dude. Once he lost his title, Pereira decided to move up to 205 pounds for the first time in his MMA career, all nine of his previous bouts having taken place at 185. Pereira's divisional debut came in July of 2023 at UFC 291 against former UFC light heavyweight champion Jan Blachowicz, who was coming off his draw against number 3 ranked Magomed Ankalaev that previous year. Pereira got taken down and controlled throughout the opening round, Blachowicz searching for rear naked chokes while on his back for roughly four minutes of it. Pereira got some respect back in round two, piecing Blachowicz up and landing heavier and heavier combinations as the round came to a close. Alex outstruck Blachowicz in round three as well, though he was taken down with 45 seconds remaining on the clock and ended the fight on his back. Pereira was awarded the split decision victory in what was a very hard fought but well deserved win where he did something his adversary as real Adesanya couldn't beat Jan Blahovich. And before you go and say, oh, but Brady, he fought Jan in a three-round fight, and Adesanya's fight with Blahovich was five rounds. 
Well, you may be right. Adesanya still lost four rounds on all three judges' scorecards against him. Even if that fight was also three rounds, Blahovich still would have beat him. Nonetheless, this performance got him a title shot against another former champion, this one number two ranked Yuri Prohoshka, last November at UFC 295, where he also did something Adesanya couldn't, become the UFC light heavyweight champion. Pereira did a great job of limiting Prohoshka's attack early, deadening his leg just one minute into the contest with his nasty calf kicks. He continued to land it throughout the opening round, affecting Yuri worse and worse with it each time he landed. Yuri did take him down midway through the opening round, though Pereira found his way back to his feet before the round came to a close. Prohoshka caught Pereira with some heavy shots in the second, and it appeared he was making the adjustments needed in order to win the fight, but he ended up getting clipped with Pereira's left hook and was dropped momentarily. Yuri shot in on a double leg against the fence where he was immediately met with some nasty elbows thrown by the Brazilian. Yuri fell into his back before the ref pulled Pereira off him, and Alex Pereira had done it again. Just like he became a two-division world champion in kickboxing's premier organization, he became a two-division world champion in MMA's premier organization just 364 days following his claim of the middleweight title at UFC 281. Poton is the ninth fighter in UFC history to become a champ champ, but is the first to hold it in the UFC's middleweight and light heavyweight divisions. Pereira then accepted the biggest task of his mixed martial arts career, when he headlined UFC 300 opposing former champion Jamal Hill in his first title defense. He got to work with his outside leg kicks early in this one, Hill returning fire with some good leg kicks of his own. Pereira then began to go to the body of Hill with his jab, landing a number of them. Hill partially kicked Pereira in the groin, Pereira shrugging the referee off as he came in to stop the action. The champion landed that thunderous left hook of his immediately following, flooring Hill on the spot, where he followed up with some more ground strikes for the KO win at 314 of the opening round. So, with his first light heavyweight title defense out of the way, let's take a closer look at who Alex Pereira has beat during his combat sports career. Beginning with his kickboxing career, Pereira boasts wins over Felipe Micheletti, who went 30-7 and as an amateur, and is 17-11 and as a pro. He's a three-time national champion in boxing, and in kickboxing, he's a Waco Pro light heavyweight champ, an MKN cruiserweight world champion, and a super combat heavyweight tournament champion. Then we have Cesar Almeida, who's 47-8-1 and as a pro kickboxer. He's a WGP cruiserweight champion and a WGP tournament winner. He's a WGP heavyweight tournament runner-up, a super combat light heavyweight champion, a WKN light heavyweight champion, a Waco Brazilian K1 cruiserweight champion, and a Brazilian national kickboxing champion. Almeida just improved his mixed martial arts record to 5-0 and earlier this month when he won his UFC debut via Sakura on Nako, and Alex went 2-1 and against him across three fights. We got Dustin Jacoby, who though went 10-8 and as a kickboxer, is a Road to Glory tournament winner, a Glory Middleweight Contender Tournament winner, and a Glory Qualification Tournament winner. He didn't have the best record as a kickboxer, obviously, but he fought the very best right out of the gate, and he's also currently a staple in the UFC's light heavyweight division. We got Sahak Parparian, who's 50-14-5 as a pro kickboxer. He's a Glory Middleweight Contender Tournament runner-up. He's an It's Showtime Middleweight World Champion, a WFCA World Champion, and a WFCA European Champion. Alexander Dimitrenko, who went 20-8-1 and and as a pro kickboxer. He's a Russian K1 champion, a Waco K1 world champion, and as an amateur, he's a World Combat Games gold medalist. Israel Adesanya, who went 32-0 and as an amateur, 75-5 and as a professional. He's a two-time boxing champion at Super 8 tournaments with a record of 5-1 and in the sport. He's a three-time King in the Ring kickboxing champion and a glory middleweight contender tournament winner. Pereira, of course, went 2-0 and against him. Simon Marcus, who went 49-5-2 as a pro kickboxer, 19-2-2 as an amateur. He's a three-time glory middleweight champion, a glory middleweight contender tournament winner, a WBC Muay Thai light heavyweight champion, a WCK Muay Thai light heavyweight world champion, IFMA light heavyweight world champion, Lion Fight light heavyweight champion, World Combat Games gold medalist, a Thailand cruiserweight champion, a WKA cruiserweight champion, WMC openweight Chinese champion, a WPMF World Light Heavyweight Champion, a two-time WLF Kunlin Tournament Champion, and an IPPC Light Heavyweight Champion, who Pereira went 2-0 against. We got Yusuri Balgaru, 27-7 as a pro kickboxer, a Glory Middleweight Contender Tournament winner, and an IRO Middleweight Champion, who Pereira went 2-1 against. We got Jason Wellness, who went 31-12 as a pro. He was a Glory Middleweight Champion and an It's Showtime Middleweight Champion. Wilness also beat Joe Schilling, Simon Marcus, and Israel Adesanya in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back fights in the kickboxing ring. And Pereira, though, went 1-2 and two against Wilness across three fights. He won their third the last time they fought, and he's the only man to ever stop Wilness with strikes, doing so via violent KO with a flying knee. Dongay Abena, who's 27-8 and eight as a pro, and he's a glory light heavyweight champion and an A1 WCC heavyweight tournament champion. Ertigo Byrick, who is 17-10 as a pro and a two-time WFL middleweight champion. And then Artem Vakatov, 
who was 23 and 6 as a pro. He went 88 and 4 as an amateur. And Volkatov is a two time Glory Light Heavyweight Champion that had five straight title defenses before losing it to Pereira. Volkatov is also a Battle of Champions Light Heavyweight Champion, a WMC World Heavyweight Champion, and a four time IFMA World Champion that Pereira went 1 and 1 against. In my opinion, Pereira's best kickboxing wins come over Simon Marcus, Jason Wilness, Cesar Almeida, Israel Adesanya, and Artem Volkatov. I, for one, rate Simon Marcus pretty highly. I mean, he was always my favorite kickboxer boxer to watch, and he was such a skilled, skilled talent. Simon Marcus defeated the likes of Joe Schilling, Sadabusi, Artem Vokatov, Artem Levin, Israel Adesanya, Jason Wilness, and Dustin Jacoby in his days as a pro kickboxer, going 2-1 against Schilling, 1-0 against C, 1-0 against Vokatov, 2-0 with a draw against Levin, 1-0 against Adesanya, 3-1 against Wilness, and 2-0 against Jacoby. Pereira is the last and the second to last man to defeat him. Now let's take a closer look at Pereira's MMA wins since July of 2022. We got Sean Strickland, who was 25 and 3 as a professional. He was 16 and 0 during his career as a middleweight. He was a four-time defending King of the Cage middleweight champion, and he went on to win the UFC middleweight title following his defeat to Pereira. Since fighting Pereira, Strickland has gone three and two. Both of those losses coming in five round split decisions that many scored for him. Next is Israel Adesanya, who is 23 and one as a professional, also undefeated at 185 pounds through his career at 23 and 0. He was the interim UFC middleweight champion. Once he unified the belts, he went on to defend it five straight times before losing it to Pereira, and he went on to become a two-time UFC middleweight champion. Jan Blachowicz, who was 29, nine and one as a professional. He's a two-time defending KSW light heavyweight champion, a three-time KSW light heavyweight tournament winner, an IFMA Muay Thai world champion, and a two-time Muay Thai national champion. Google states that Blachowicz has a 34-0 record in kickboxing, but considering he finished in the Polish Cup in third place, as well as his first year at the IFMA World Championships, I'm going to assume that he went 34-2 or 34-3 in the sport. Something like that. And also, of course, he's a former UFC light heavyweight champion. Then we got Yuri Prohoshka, who is 29-3-1 as a professional. He's a Muay Thai national champion, a GFC light heavyweight champion in MMA, a title he defended once before vacating it in order to join the Ryzen's light heavyweight roster. He became the Ryzen light heavyweight champion, also a title of which he defended once and vacated it in order to join the UFC. He became the UFC light heavyweight champion when he became the first man to ever submit Glover Teixeira. Again, a title he vacated, only he didn't get to defend it this time as he suffered a nasty injury. Prohoshka had 25 knockouts and 29 wins, including 28 overall finishes. He went 23-1-1 over his last 25 with a win over that lone defeat, and he came into the boat on a 13-fight win, 11-fight finish streak. And then we have his most recent fight with Jamal Hill, who was 13-1 as a professional with 8 knockouts. He won the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship against Glover Teixeira before vacating it, like Prohoshka, via injury. He'd never lost a stand-up fight prior, and he's also a former KOP light heavyweight champion, a title he won via five-round unanimous decision in just his fourth fight. That's five world champions Pereira has beat inside of just two years. And something else pretty incredible about that, all five of those world champions he's beat in the last two years were champions in other promotions before coming over to the UFC. What's more, he turned Bruno Silva, Israel Adesanya, Jan Blachowicz, and Yuri Prohoshka into wrestlers. There's literally three kickboxing and Muay Thai champions there I just listed, and the other had 19 knockouts and 22 overall wins. He hadn't even been in the UFC for one year when he was already thrown into the top five when he was matched against Sean Strickland who came into the fight on a six-fight win streak and was undefeated at 185 pounds in his career. Then his success after that is just unprecedented. Going from three-minute rounds in kickboxing to five-minute rounds in MMA, not to mention all the extra skills he had to acquire in order to have a successful career in MMA, it's remarkable what Pereira has done in this short of a time. He made his UFC debut at 34 years of age. He was 34. Talk about maximizing potential. No one expected him to evolve this quickly, and honestly, many of us didn't even really expect him to evolve that much at all. We thought he was capable of knocking out lesser competition, but be all wrestled, all grappled, and or all experienced by the best. His takedown and submission defense has really come a long way. We all thought Israel Adesanya had a quick ascension, and he did, but it only took Alex one year to win UFC gold. Alex Pereira, to many, holds the title of the most feared kickboxer on earth for a reason. He is one dangerous man on the feet. Of his seven defeats in kickboxing, he boasts wins over five of those men. That's right. There are only two people across Pereira's 40-fight professional kickboxing career he didn't beat. 56-7-2 Artem Levin and 72-14-2 Arthur Koshenko. 
probably because he only fought each man a single time. Levin is easily one of the most decorated kickboxers of all time, becoming an eight-time world champion and nine-time national champion as an amateur before even turning professional. As a professional, Levin became a glory middleweight champion, an ACB middleweight world champion, a WKN cruiserweight world champion, and a WBC light heavyweight world champion, amongst others. Kishenko, on the other hand, is a three-time world champion and three-time national champion as an amateur, before turning professional where he went on to become a four-time world champion, holding titles for K1, Kunlin, and King of Kings. Alex Pereira went 25-3 and as an amateur kickboxer with 25 knockouts, 33-7 and as a professional kickboxer with 21 knockouts, 1-0 and in boxing with one knockout. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention he made his professional boxing debut in June of 2017 and picked up a third-round TKO before going on his legendary 9-fight world championship run, and he's 10-2 and in MMA with 8 knockouts. Adding to it, not only was Pereira a glory middleweight and light heavyweight champion, but he also won the glory middleweight contender tournament prior to capturing the middleweight belt, and also a two-time WGP middleweight champion, a WACO Pro Pan American middleweight champion, and the Jungle Fight Kickboxing middleweight champion. Pereira's overall glory record was 13-4, and going 58-10 and overall in kickboxing between his amateur and professional runs, and including his MMA and boxing records, he has an overall combat sports record of 69-12. and after losing his professional mixed martial arts debut, Alex Pereira has since gone 10-1 and with a win over that lone man to defeat him. Three, actually. He has three wins over that lone man to defeat him. Pereira pretty much came out of nowhere and just started beating the very best the sport of mixed martial arts has to offer. He's already headlined two Madison Square Garden cards as well as UFC 300. It's insane how big of a star he's become. He doesn't even speak English and he's seemingly already everyone's favorite fighter. I can't say enough good things about this man's career. He really has done it all, and he'll without a doubt go down as one of the greatest combat athletes of all time. I'll be honest, this one really took some doing. Doing a resume review on someone as decorated across two sports as Alex Pereira, there were so many fights I had to watch, and so much to jot down, record, and edit. So if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I would really love to one day make a living doing this, as well as more topic videos in the future such as top 5 and top 10 pieces. You can also check out MyMMANews.com where I cover fights every weekend, and I really appreciate all of you for watching. Hopefully I'll see you on the next one.